Well, good evening, Abundant Grace Church. How is everybody this evening on this glorious Wednesday? Beautiful. You know, this is called Recharge Wednesday, right, people? You know why? Because this is the midweek service and we need to recharge. Welcome everybody that's online, everybody coming in here in the sanctuary. It's great to be here. It's great to have technology to be online also, but we'd love to have you here. Don't forget we have a Sunday service at 10 a.m. as well. So we would love to have you. Welcome all. Come all. Come as you are. God is God is good, isn't he? All the time. He's worthy to be praised. We lift up the name of Jesus. The devil said, what? The devil said, what? Right? He's under our feet. The devil is under our feet. We're going to worship the Lord. Give him all the glory he deserves and honor. Lord, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the skies. Your righteousness like a mighty mountain. Your justice flows like the ocean side. So lift your voices, and I will lift my voice to worship you, my King. My strength is in you, Lord, and I will find my strength in the shadow of your Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. This righteous, your righteousness, like a mighty mountain. Your justice flows like the ocean side. So I raise my voice and I will lift my voice to worship you, my King. And I will find my strength in the shadow of your way. probably the day we go home to be with the Lord. Yeah. And then we're going to be like, ah, I get it. Glory to God. And our life is definitely, now our life is, we have a life here, but our true life is in heaven, right? And even right now, we're supposed to be living a heavenly life here on earth. And But when we get there, you know, that's our true us. That's our true existence. And to be in the presence of God 24-7 is going to be amazing. But we have a job to do. And our job here, our only job, not our job that we work at, our career, whatever. Our job is to win people to Jesus. Amen? Yes. Glory to God. And, um, this is a new song that uh, 
we're gonna do tonight. It's uh, my first go around with it, so bear with me. George Mine sprung too. it on me at the last second, but you guys know it. <laughs> now we'll be okay. Glory to God. Yeah. God is so good. Yeah. We're almost home, right? We're almost home. Amen. We're almost home.
kneel before you now, bow before you, Lord, and we worship you. Oh, we worship you and bow, oh, Lord, our high above all the earth. Oh, oh, oh. 
invite you to worship church. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you this evening. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We yield to you. We yield to the precious Holy Spirit. Speak through us. Have your way in us. We lift you up. You be exalted. We decrease as you increase. Guess what time it is? Yeah. Offering time. Are we all happy? Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Isn't Pastor Frank awesome? He is awesome. I just love this guy. He always has a word in season. He has a word in season every single time. He is awesome. I get excited. You're married to me. You have to say that. Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. But I speak the truth That's right. all the time. That's right. I do not tell a lie. Uh, well, hello, everyone out there in TV land. <laughs> I just want to say that like Willy Wonka. Uh, Mark TV, TV, right? Everyone out there on live stream, thank you for joining us for our Wednesday night service. It's offering time. If you need an offering envelope, Paul will get one to you. Raise up your hand. If you're giving online or you want to give online, there's a couple ways to do it. You can text to give. If you're tech savvy, you can go to 732-479-8787. You can text that way or you can text that and it'll prompt you on what to do there. There should be like a, a menu that pops up on your text and then you can put your credit card in that way. Uh, you can send us a check, Abundant Grace Church. Uh, 108 Indian Head Road, Tom's River, New Jersey, 08753. Or you can go online to www.abundantgracechurch.com. And you can do that on your phone too, by the way. You can go to that website and go to the giving tab and do the same thing. Click on the giving tab, um, drop down menu would come and follow the promptings. Amen? Amen. It is good to give to the Lord. Yeah. Good to give. You want to get in on this. This is good stuff. You can't get this kind of stuff out in the world. No way. But God sees and loves a cheerful giver. Amen? So let's hold up our offerings. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Father, corporately, Father, in agreement, Father, as we give you our tithes and our offerings, Father. We love you and we give because we love you. Yeah. Father, no one's twisting our arm. We just love you so much and we're so grateful and thankful for what you've done for us all the time, Lord. Us, our family. Father, thank you for blessing us, us and our children, making us a huge blessing to a lot of people, Father. We thank you that every need of the church is met. Every personal need of everyone sitting here is met in the name of Jesus. We claim it by faith and we thank you for that. Father, we never lack, we never run out. Your word says yes. that we will be given back good measure, pressed down, shaken together, together, and running over. We like the running over, Lord, so keep it running over in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for everything that you're doing in us, through us, and around us, and for us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's it? That's all you got tonight? Wow, I have 40 minutes. What am I going to do with myself? Well, I could... Something. I can preach a little bit. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. If you have your uh, Bibles, I guess you guys probably know where to turn after like six and a half months. Over to Ephesians chapter six. Um, while you guys are turning there, we'll pray. So Father, we come to you tonight as touching this service, asking you for the anointing. The anointing that is on your word, Father, to change people's lives, to set the captives free, Father. We thank you for that. Lord, I just ask you to speak through me, not as I prepared anything tonight, as you'd want people to hear, Father. You're the need meter. You're our source. And I ask you to meet everybody here tonight exactly at their point of need. For those who've come with ready ears to hear your word and a hungry heart that's receptive for your word, we know it will take root. And as they put it into practice in their lives, it will produce for them, and we will see change. 
we will see the manifestations of every victory that you've already sent Jesus to pay for. And we thank you for it all in advance. And we say bring glory to yourself this evening. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before we go on to that hidden uh, piece of armor, actually weaponry in this case, I just want to kind of do a little short review. Um, and Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 says this, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You know, we looked at last week, super important piece of weaponry, which was the double-edged sword of the Spirit. Okay? What's the sword? What's the sword of the Spirit? Why is it two-edged? It's important that we get a hold of that. Too many believers only think there's one edge. The one edge was instituted when God gave his word, anointed word to men, right? All scriptures inspired by the Holy Ghost. Do we have scripture for that? We do. Does that mean some of the scripture or does that mean all scripture? I know Christians that think the devil's, there is no devil. Well, does the Bible specifically talk about our enemy, the adversary, Satan, the devil, Lucifer? Absolutely. So either you believe all scripture is inspired or you don't. All scripture is inspired by the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? We're going to have to do some fighting down here. The fighting we're going to do is to, yeah, make it through every day of our life. But buckle up if you decided to completely 100% sell yourself out to serve the Lord. Because what do you put on your back? This huge target. You know, are there Christians today living like the devil? Yes. Does that mean they're not going to heaven? No. There's one unpardonable sin. And that unpardonable sin, which leads to death, is renouncing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But there's plenty of believers out there that haven't done that. They're just living like the enemy wants. Do you think he's a threat to them? To him? No. He's doing what he, they're doing what he wants them to do. But when you sell out to serve Jesus, 100%, you paint this target on your back. Yep. So, but God said, God didn't say, well, you painted a target on your back. Too bad. Good luck. <laughs> See ya. Hope it works out for you. No, he gave us these spiritual armaments to stand against all the wiles of the enemy. Right? We looked at the sword of the spirit. There's two edge. Yes, the inspired word given to men by God. This is the first edge of the, of the sword. The second edge is when it comes out of our mouths. We don't need to just know it. We need to speak it. We looked at that scripture for the sake of time. We won't go back there. Revelation, where it says there was a two-edged sword coming out of Jesus' mouth. Why? A sword coming out of his mouth? Yeah, and that same sword better be coming out of your mouth. Because what does he want to do to you? Steal, kill, and destroy that's all he's about. How does he do it? Through lies. Mm -hmm. Deception. Does he work through people? Yes. Yeah, but those people he works through are lies and deception. Mm -hmm. You know, if your boss comes to you and said, um, you're never going to go anywhere in this company, that's a harsh kind of thing for somebody to say. Can the enemy be working through that through him or her? Mm -hmm. Could that be a, is that a lie or deception? If you know on the inside you've done a great job and you've met all the requirements to move up the ladder wherever you're working, that's a lie. That's a lie, right? And he's the author of lies. And what do we need to do? The Bible's specific about we need to bind some stuff here on earth, right? We need to bind up on earth and loose on earth, just like we bind in heaven and loose in heaven. Amen. But if we never speak, how can we do that? Do we get up every day and remind the devil who we are over him? Who has all the authority, him or us? We, do. us. 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 we need to act like it, and we need to speak like it every day. I remind him every day, you have no legal right to operate in my life. I forbid you to. Over my family, my body, my finances, my children, my grandchildren, our descendants down the line. Over you guys. Yeah. I bind you up, shut you down, and command you in the name of Jesus with the power and authority I have to use that power to get out of here. Yes. 
And let me throw something else at you. You lose. You're a loser. That's Read right. the back of the book. That's right. right. That's right. Goodbye. <laughs> Does that mean the thoughts? No. Quite often after you do that, that thought pops in your head again. Mm. Not entertaining it. We don't have to. We don't have to answer him. That's right. Mm -hmm. The only answer is, it is in the name of Jesus, Be go. Be Take that thought captive. But it's not just about taking that thought captive. It's also about replacing that thought yes. with what the word says. Yeah. Oh, you know, that doctor's report doesn't look good. Yeah. I don't care. The word of God says, by Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. Amen. Your financial situation. That bill's due tomorrow. What are you going to do? My own brother Keith Morris, the only time he's ever answered devil is, what are you going to do? <laughs> you know, I know that God will meet all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Not by your lie that's going to put me in fear and make me make a decision. Oh, let me go run out and put it on a credit card. Yeah. Uh, right. You know what I'm saying? Yep, come on now. But if we don't speak, we don't get it. that's our sword. That's what we said. Plunges. What do we, how, how deep did we say a wound had to be plunged into? For a fatal? Two inches. Two inches into the gut of an enemy, it was fatal most often. But you're, when you take up your sword of the spirit and speak out that second edge, you're not just going two inches into him. You're running him through. And that sword's coming out the other side. Because there isn't thing one he can do against the word of God. Amen. So I just kind of wanted to refresh that because it is so, so important. Now let's talk about the hidden verse, the hidden uh, piece of our weaponry, which is the lance of prayer. And I thought we were going to get through this tonight. And then I realized there's no way we're getting through this tonight. I won't be here next week. Our, grand, our grandest, granddaughter, oldest granddaughter, I got stuck between grandest daughter. But if it was up to her, she'd be the grandest daughter. Um, our oldest granddaughter is graduating from middle school. So that's next Wednesday night. So somebody will be here. I don't know who yet. But we'll, I guarantee somebody will be here. Uh, whether it's Brother Tom or Miss Carol, Pastor Eddie. It's all of you. Um, but anyway, getting into the Lance of Prayer. We're moving down to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. But... Paul finishes his discussion on spiritual armor in verse 18 when he talks about, and let's read it, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, although the lance itself is not specifically mentioned, it was part of the Roman soldier's battle gear. They carried lances. As a matter of fact, they carried five to six different types of lances. Um, so it's an important piece of their weaponry. And although not specifically mentioned, Paul alludes to it when he starts talking about our prayer life, right? If we didn't talk about it, our spiritual armor would be incomplete because prayer is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon, and I'm going to get a little ahead of myself, but just like there's different types of lances that the Roman soldier carried, there's different types of prayer for different situations, and we're going to look at them. We might get into two of them or so tonight, and then we'll finish up the others, but like I said, there's many types of lances, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later. However, when Paul said in verse 18, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. You know, when we decide to wield that lance of prayer and supplication, just like the sword of the spirit is thrust into the enemy, that lance of prayer reaches forward into the spirit realm. Where is our battle fought? Is it fought with flesh and blood? No. We looked at that at the beginning of Ephesians chapter 6. It's not fought with flesh and blood. Although it feels that way sometimes. Dude, why are you coming against me? Mm. Feels like we're fighting flesh and blood, but we're not. We're fighting in the spirit realm. Okay? We're fighting in the spirit realm against evil and all the works of the enemy. Mm. 
So, that prayer, that lens, pierces the enemy just like the sword does. Hallelujah. Let's look a little bit at what the Roman soldier, you know, in, in Paul's day, carried. So the Roman soldiers of Paul's day often carried a short lance and a long one. Hmm. Now listen up. This is, this is comparison to prayer. With the longer lance, they would thrust through the enemy, wounding them. you got to see where I'm going with this, because there's a reason why I wanted to go back and talk about the sword of the spirit first. Because they go hand in hand. Okay? With the longer lance, they thrust through the enemy, wounding them. Once the, the enemy laid on the ground, wounded... This is going to get graphic. <laughs> the Roman soldier would then come close to the enemy and cut off his head with their sword. There's a correlation between prayer and the sword of the spirit. And if you think not, well, how about we elaborate on this a little bit and take a look at what scripture says. Okay. John chapter 14, verse 26 says this. But the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, and I know we looked at this already in, in our study of the armor of God, but the helper of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, will bring to your remembrance all things that I had said to you. Now, think about that for a second. When we pray, and it says all manner of prayer, right? We're going to get, like I said, we're going to get into this. But let's get that example of you being put under pressure in a situation. Whatever that situation is. And you don't know what to pray. You know, there's only so much we can pray in our own understanding. And what do we, how do we need to pray? According to the word of God. Not, Lord, here I am again, help me. That's a foxhole prayer. You know, that's a foxhole prayer. We all need help when we need help. But we need to pray according to what the word says. So if you don't know the word, we're not praying effectively. However, when you start to pray in the spirit, and what does the Holy Spirit do? You get something rising up on the inside. Was prayer a weapon when it rises up on the inside? But that's directly proportional to the amount of word that you have in your heart. Because if you don't have word in your heart, how is anything going to be brought to your remembrance when you've got nothing to remember? I know we've talked about this already, but it's important. But now the Holy Spirit brings something to your remembrance. So prayer instituted your answer and then your answer needs to be spoken. Amen. You stab them with the lance and you chopped off his head with the sword. They go hand in hand. You see what I'm saying here? It's not just, and yes, we, there's different, like I said, different types of prayer. I use an illustration of needing prayer for an immediate need, right? What I talked about a little bit earlier multiple types of lances that the Roman soldier carried. In verse 18, where Paul says, with all prayer, taken, is taken from a Greek phrase that's better translated with all kinds of prayer. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how the phrase translates. To not, um, it doesn't necessarily mean with all prayer, it means with all kinds of prayer. So it says all kinds of prayer is the true Greek phrase. Guess what? There must be multiple kinds of prayer. Right. And there is for different reasons and purposes, right? And then Paul also goes on in the verse of Scripture to say what? Praying always. And you go, well, I can't pray always. Yeah, you can. Yeah. When Paul states always, right? The word always is also taken from a Greek phrase which means at each and every occasion, at every opportunity, every time you get a chance, every season, or each and every possible moment. Can we have a prayerful life more than we think we can? More than the 10 minutes we spend in the morning? Should we be praying over things during the day as they come up. Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you an example. And I, look, I'm not the end-all be-all. I'm just, no. I've had great spiritual mentors, you know, our mother and father in the faith, Carol and Miss Carol and Pastor Anthony, drilled this into us for years, you know, of leading this prayerful kind of life. 
So I didn't just, it wasn't a revelation I got, it's what I learned over time. Like for example, you guys know business-wise, you know, I, I run a business. Before, and, and I try, and I miss this too, but whether it's a call, whether it's a meeting, whether I'm about to, you know, it's a Zoom meeting, I'm about to walk into one, I gotta call a client about something good or bad, what should we do? Lord, give me wisdom, show me what I need to know, when I need to know it, give me the words that I need to say, whether they're to provide comfort, whether it's to get to the bottom of the problem. You know, because if you run a business, any of you who run a business or have been in management many times, 99% of the time, the things you gotta get involved with are not fun. Nope. And not, I'm dealing with a situation right now that I can't believe me and my business partner are in that we gotta deal with, and it's not fun. You know, where, where people are involved, it can be challenging, right? And I actually said this in our office Zoom meeting this morning. Jody was on it, so she knows I said this. I learned from people that mentored me in business years ago, and I would encourage you guys to do this, if, you have, if you're confronted with making a good phone call and a bad phone call, make the bad one first. Mm -hmm. Always make the bad phone call first. Because what, why are we putting it off? Now, if we believe that we have the lance of prayer, that bad phone call might not be such a bad phone call. Right? I can't tell you how many times, not only in business, but in ministry, where I had a preconceived notion of how somebody was going to react to something. Yeah. Oh man, they're going to hate this. This isn't going to be good. What are we going to do? Mm. And you like put it off and you put it off and you put it off. And what starts happening? You get anxious. Yep. You get nervous. Where is that coming from? God? Mm. Now, if we believe we have the lance of prayer and the sword of the spirit, can't we confront anything, good or bad? Mm. Absolutely. Right? So we should be praying always. Every time we have an opportunity. And prayer is not optional for a Christian. You know, I'm going to be the first one to tell you, God's been dealing with me a lot lately, and it's the first time it really came up again in my heart this morning. I haven't had a chance to share it with you yet about my prayer life. Because we get busy. You know, I, Jody, you know the story. Jody gets up before me, um, usually like an hour and a half before me, or an hour before me, goes to her little room or, or office, that we have downstairs, that she just locks herself in there, she gets into prayer, she starts to read, she does her thing. I get up an hour later, which is good, gives her quiet time, and she's quiet when I read. You know, grab my coffee, sit on the couch, and I do my thing. But then what starts to happen? It starts to get close to like nine o'clock, and then you're going, and then you hear, you know, I don't, I don't have a ring, I don't keep my ringer on my phone, but my phone's next to me, because I, you know, I clear my emails in the morning so I can get to my devotions, and I hear, bzz, 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 and you're like, and then you, you you get through your reading. You know, for me, it's I read five devotions, four devotions, whatever it is, five, five, and get into the Word of God, and then you start to think. Your mind starts to go. Mm. Now I know I need to shut that down and get into my prayer time, but you know, I'm hungry. I got to eat. We find all the excuses. You might read for an hour and a half, two hours, an hour, whatever it is, but we seem to cut short our prayer time. Because it's not just about reading the Word. We absolutely have to. It's a must. That's not an option either. But prayer isn't an option either. And quite honestly, me and Jody come to pray together every morning or try to do it every morning when there's a schedule conflict where she has to leave early or I have something early, you know, and, and we cover the ground that we need to cover. But 99% of the time after we cover that ground, we kind of cover everything I need to cover in my own understanding. But we need to sometimes pray in the Holy Ghost because there's a lot of stuff I know I need. I don't have the answers yet. And there's a lot of stuff I don't know I need yet. But I have the greater one living on the inside of me. And that's your direct line of communication mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Prayer is not optional for a Christian who's serious about their spiritual life. Mm -hmm. So, really, I believe, and this lines up, you guys know that a lot of this has come out, and I, I've given the wrong title of the book. 
I've, I've done a lot of studying with the word and Rick Brenner's book, and it's actually, I keep calling it Life in the Combat Zone. It's actually Dress to Kill. Dress to kill. Mm -hmm. It's the wrong one. It's Dress to Kill. Very similar. But, and I agree with what Rick Brenner says, there's really, when you break it down, and Bible scholars will kind of argue about this, there's really six different types of prayer. Mm -hmm. Just like there's a number of different lances, there's six different types of prayer. And I wanted to get into, try to get into two of these tonight, and I think we'll get through the two of them. The, and I'll read the six of them before we start. Number one is the prayer of consecration. Number two is the prayer of petition. Number three is the prayer of authority, or we can call it the prayer of faith. Number four is the prayer of thanksgiving. Number five is the prayer of supplication. And number six is the prayer of intercession. Some of these can overlap in some areas, just so you know. But let's start by taking a look at number one, the prayer of consecration. First and foremost, the word prayer is a compound Greek word, and it means face to face. Hallelujah. Like we have an ability, and I think we forget this because we take it for granted. We should never take anything for granted in our walk with the Lord. We take for granted that our walk with the Lord is a face-to-face -face walk. Yep. Come on. Is it really any different mm. than Adam in the garden? Sure. Well, God came down and physically walked with Adam. Mm. We can physically walk with God every day. Face-to-face. Face-to-face. Spirit-to-spirit. That's our, Amen. that's what prayer means. It's a face-to-face, one-on-one, eyeball-to-eyeball, word-to-word lifestyle. Thank you, Lord. We forget it. It's, like, it's almost like we, and maybe I'm just talking for me, sometimes we take a prayer granted to the, for granted to the point where we're just like, we're going through the motions because we know we should pray. Mm -hmm. And we forget it's face-to-face. Face-to-face, yeah. right? So the prayer of con consecration is a prayer where we freely vow to give our lives to God in exchange for his life. Hallelujah. And if you want an example of that, and I didn't see that until I kind of got a little uh, tidbit from Mr. Renner, you know, Brother Renner on this was, um, turn if you have a chance, and Bonnie, you can put this up here, turn over to 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1, verse 11. Hannah, and I, I, you know, I always, how many, I don't view guys because, you know, we should be not letting foul language come out of your mouth, but I often use the phrase, holy Hannah. Well, this is Hannah we're talking about. There is holy Hannah, right? <laughs> so this, All right. that's legit, holy Hannah, right? First, Sam, what's that? It's in the word. So first, Sam, first Samuel uh, chapter one, verse 11. We know the story that Hannah had a need. She had a real need. Verse 11 starts out by saying, She made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. Now, that's, that's her prayer. This is what she's praying. But here comes the consecration part, right? She's making a vow to God to freely give up something in exchange for God's life, mm. right? If you will give your maidservant a mad child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. Mm. Lord, and you know, sometimes we say, when we get in trouble, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll, I'll go to church every Sunday. Yeah. That's, there's no faith behind that. Hannah went to God because she knew God. She didn't know about God. She knew God. So she went to God with a prayer by faith. By faith. Right? Now, if you jump down the same, uh, same chapter to verse 19. Yes, verse 19. Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord because things were happening. And returned and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife. And the Lord remembered her. What did they do? She prayed. She made a vow of consecration. 
that, Lord, if this child is born, he will serve you forever. And what did they do? Did they just say, okay, well, no, they got busy. It's the only way I can put it. They got busy making, doing their part of this plan, right? And the Lord did what? He remembered her. Consecrated thou, set him up, set Samuel apart, and God said, I like that. You know what, that guy Samuel? I could use him. Did God use Samuel in a mighty way? When I look back to the Old Testament, and, you know, I'm a big, I've always been a big David, you know, guy, you know, studying David, man after God's own heart, total mess up 99% of the time, quick to repent, turn his heart around, and follow God, right? Paid for his mistakes, but still loved God, never denounced God, you know, he knew God was with him, and Samuel was a huge part of that, you know, before it became, after Samuel died, it was Nathan, but... The reality became, God said, Hannah, I like your prayer. I can use your son. Here you go. So it came to pass, verse 20, in the process of time, that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I asked for him for the Lord, or from the Lord. Literally, in these verses of Scripture, we see Hannah vowing that her boy would be devoted to the work of the ministry. And Hannah gave her most value and prized possession to God. Are we willing to do the same thing? You know, when we pray a prayer of consecration, and it, that can come in different shapes and sizes for different individuals. But for example, you know, God's birthed something on the inside of you. Lord, I want to reach more people for you. You know, something along those lines where we're saying, Lord, just you know, help me do that. And I will promise to serve you all the days of my life. You know, open doors of opportunity. Well, guess what we need to do? That's a consecrated prayer. We're setting ourselves apart for the service of the ministry, vowing to God if he helps us fulfill his plan in our lives, we'll continue down that road. Guess what we need to do? Fulfill that vow, that prayer of consecration, right? Yeah. Hannah gave her most valuable and prized possession to God in response to answering her prayer. Now, if you go through the story of Samuel, it must have been hard for her because it wasn't like Samuel was working from home. When he got old enough, he went off to the temple and did his thing. And she didn't get to see him much. You know, without getting into the verses of Scripture, I think she got to see him like once a year or whatever. But I often wonder when I read her story about, Lord, give me a son, if she was more, if she wanted a son more because she wanted a son to serve God. Because if you want a son, you want to spend time with your son, right? But she wanted a son so bad who she wanted to serve the Lord. Hannah came to that altar with this prayer of consecration, sold out by faith that God was able and that she was going to live up to the, what she promised God she would do. That's a prayer of consecration. Now, the second one, this is all we're going to get through tonight, is many of you might be familiar with this, is the prayer of petition. Um, prayer of petition expresses one's basic needs and wants to God. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7, you guys don't have to turn there, says this. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayer, this is Jesus, by the way. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. A prayer of petition is something that we're expressing on our behalf, coming to God with a need or needs that we have. You know, when we pray a prayer of petition, we recognize that we're incapable of meeting our need ourselves. Mm. And guess what? I personally believe we need to come to God every day mm. with an incapability of meeting our need. Yep. Because we should never be doing it in our own strength. Mm. Right? Never be doing it in our own strength. 
Um, give you another verse of scripture that supports this of what we just said. James chapter 5, verse 17 says, now remember when James wrote his book, or he wrote his, um, yeah, his, his, his you know, the book of James, he was talking to believers. He wasn't talking to unbelievers, he was talking to believers. So in verse 17 he says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. So the prayer of petition stems from someone who's aware of their need. I'm going to give you a story, and then I want to look at a, another verse of Scripture. Because the prayer of petition contains some other things with it. The prayer of petition has to be a prayer prayed in faith according to what the word says about what you're bringing to God as your concern or your issue, for lack of a better term, and it's got to be done with thanksgiving. Mm. Too many Christians still to this day pray the same prayer over and over again. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need this. I still don't have this. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need this. Dude, do you believe God's word is true? And if we operate by faith, guess how many times we need to pray? Uno. What do we do from there? Thank, Thank you. God. Thank you. We're going to hold on to that because we're going to go somewhere else. But I'm going to tell you a story about me and Jody. This rose up in my heart this morning. She knows the story. Years ago, we were living up north. Things were going haywire. I can't even tell you how bad haywire they were. And I'm not saying this to how great I am. Because this has only happened a couple times in my life. The Lord actually directed me to fast. And that has happened maybe two times in my entire walk with the Lord. I don't like fasting, just so you know. You know, when the Bible talks about don't be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees when they walk around with long faces so you know you're fasting, I'm walking around with a long face because I'm hungry. I'll just be honest with you. And, you know, Pastor Eddie's a big faster. Don't know how he does it for, like, days. And he fasts because, like, intermittent fasting for not... I'm not talking, you know, spiritual. I'm talking he's a big faster for diet. And I was like, dude, you're, I can't make it past practice. Sorry. <laughs> so this is like, I'm going back. I don't even know how many years ago I'm going back. And then at the same time, during that fast, the Southwest Believers Convention was going on that Brother Copeland has every year in Texas. And Jerry Seville was preaching. And Jerry Seville was preaching on the prayer of petition. Mm -hmm. And I said, light bulb. Now, what does fasting do? Fasting kind of disconnects you from this earthly world mm -hmm. and brings you into the spiritual world, mm -hmm. right? Because we're, you know, kind of brings you closer to God, and that's what it's designed to do. And I needed answers. That's how bad things were. Like, I needed desperate, emergent answers, and I needed them now. So, Jerry Seville is ministering on the prayer of petition. And he used an illustration in his own life when he went to work for Brother Copeland. And I said, Jody, I got it. This is our answer. And I literally drafted a prayer of petition that brought every need we were facing before God with the scripture to back it up. Wow. Wrote it out. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. We were going out to dinner or something, and we stood in our bedroom. We laid hands on that prayer. Amen. I read it, and we agreed. Mm -hmm. And if I look back to that prayer petition... 90% of what we prayed that looked impossible yeah. came to pass. Amen. Did it happen overnight? Man, I wish it did. Some of it took years. Yeah. But, it comes but it comes to pass. Mm -hmm. Now, I said there's components to the prayer of petition. We have to pray in faith with bringing our petition and with thanksgiving. So, Bonnie, if you could, I don't want to turn my tablet over there. Can you put up Philippians chapter 4, verse 6? Uh, start it in the New King James Version, if you could. And then we're going to see what's happening here. So this is another instance where the Apostle Paul of Philippians is talking about a prayer petition. Be anxious for what? Because guess what? If you have the lance of prayer when you pray and you believe you receive, should we be anxious? Does that say be anxious for some things? No. Or nothing? nothing? Nothing means? No. Nada. Nunca. Niente. That's about as Spanish as I get. Okay? Hola. 
Cafe au lait, we're good. Oh I can order, va I, on vacation in any Spanish country, I can order coffee. That's, ah. And I can ask for the bathrooms. And the La Biblioteca, which is the library. I got that down. My Spanish wife, who knows nothing. So be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with what thanksgiving let your crest be made to known to God. Okay, what does that say about the prayer of petition? Well, that word supplication in the Greek means something. Bonnie, can you put up the amplifier? Do not fret. I like that. Don't fret. Yeah. Or have anxiety about anything. Who's the anxiety bringer? Mm, yeah. To get you out of a place of faith? Yeah. Or to redirect your faith? <coughs> to put it on what he's bringing? Faith in the wrong thing. But in every circumstance and everything, by prayer and petition, which is what? A definite request. But we better have that definite request, better be lined up to what the Word of God says about what we're requesting. Their Christians got crazy years ago. Lord, um, I'm believing for a wife, and I really like Charlie's wife. So... I'm bringing you this petition. Don't think this stuff didn't happen. People got wacky. You know, we're fighting with flesh and blood, not flesh and blood, but principalities in the high places, and they were up on skyscrapers. No. Anyway, and everything by prayer and petition and definite request with what? Thanksgiving. Continue to make your wants known to God. Now, continue to make your wants means your situation can change. Maybe you need something today and tomorrow something different. But if it's the same thing over and over again, you only have to pray once and thank God. Think about, and this is a Joyce Meyer kind of story, think about your kids. Your kids come to you when they're little and say, man, I, mom, dad, I really want those new pair of Nikes. And you say, well, son or daughter, we're working on it. Not yet. We're doing our best. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. And then they come back the next day. Mom, Dad, I want those Nikes. We told you yesterday, I'm working on it. We'll let you know. Yeah. Day three, Mom, Dad, I really want the... Yeah. You want to slap the snot out of them. Yeah. How about if your kids come back after they asked you the first time and on day two said, Lord, uh, Mom, Dad, thank you so much for those Nikes that are coming. Yeah. Guess what? You're going to go out and get those kids that Nikes. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That's the same approach we need to take Amen. with our prayer of petition. Right. It's got to have thanksgiving attached to it because that thanksgiving is the catalyst that activates our faith that we're praying behind the prayer. And guys, look, I'm not here to deny circumstances. It gets hard. I understand that. But when the rubber meets the road, at that darkest of darkest hours, do we believe? Mm -hmm. You know, our faith has to be tested. Mm -hmm. If our faith is never tested, we're never going to know where we're at. Did Jesus face adversity? Mm -hmm. Man, did he. Mm -hmm. Constantly. Mm -hmm. con looking to kill him, looking to accuse him all over the place until it was God's timing. And that was just the plan of redemption. That wasn't them. They didn't do it. They didn't capture him. No. That's right. You know, Judas may have betrayed him, but mm. that had to happen had to happen, right? And the reality was, it was God's plan. But when the rubber meets the road, and if you, did Jesus have that kind of experience? Lord, in the garden, if this cup shall pass from me, let it pass, but if not, your will be done. The wilderness is another example. Sometimes we all feel like we're in our wilderness period. But the reality becomes, when God feels so far away, he's usually the closest. We need to dig in. Our faith needs to be tested. Why? You want to come to a higher level? You're going to get put under pressure. Mm. If you're happy with where you're at, you're going to stay there. You're going to stay there. Mm. You know, I'm not happy where I'm at. I've actually never been happy where I'm at. Yeah. I've had really good times that felt great. You know, I do feel like Paul sometimes. I had to be a base and a bound. Mm. A base is, uh, a bound is better. Don't get me wrong. But the reality is we go through these cycles in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we truly are sold out to God and believe and trust Him and bring our requests to Him with thanksgiving, 
specifically based on what the word says, we win. We're going to win. Amen? Amen? So we'll look at two weeks. We'll get into the other prayers. Glory to God. God is good, right? Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this time together. Thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing to the soul and spirit, and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the hearts, Father. We thank you for that. We thank you that you've given us all spiritual armor to stand against everything the enemy can bring. And we thank you for it all. Jesus. Bring glory to yourself this evening. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So don't forget, a couple announcements. Um, Women's Outreach tomorrow night is not going to be here. It's going to be at an outside location. So if you guys on live stream or you guys in here want to know what that is, see Jody. She'll let you know. Um, so that's happening tomorrow, Faith and Healing School and Friday. I'm actually teaching Faith and Healing School tomorrow, so I'm making an appearance back to Faith and Healing School. Uh, Brother Tom has been a, doing a great job in covering for me over these last uh, few months. Um, you'll be back on Friday, right, Tom? Sure. <laughs> Tom, you'll be back on Friday, please. Please, Tom. <laughs> but glory to God. Um, so I'll be here tomorrow morning. Um, and don't forget about... Sunday service, 10 a.m. So, glory to God. We love you guys. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, and we'll see you all you guys on Sunday at 10 a.m. Amen. Amen.